All right, uh, so let's begin. My name is Alexander Matyushensev. I'm really happy to see you all here and happy to welcome you to our uh, presentation. We're going to talk about using Cargo CD Core as a pure, pure GitOps uh, agent for Kubernetes. So uh, I'm a long-time maintainer of Argo project and currently chief architect at Acuity, company that tries to move uh, Argo to the next level. We have two speakers today. I will let my co-speaker introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leonardo. I usually go by Leo. I'm um, one of the maintainers of Argo CD and Argo Rollouts projects. I uh, work as a staff software developer at Intuit. Um, okay, uh, let me start by presenting the agenda for the day. I will start uh, by um, um, providing you uh, the problem statement, uh, providing a list of use cases that Argo City Core aims to address, okay? But before jumping into uh, what Argo City Core is, I want to provide you uh, a quick overview on Argo City component architecture. I believe with this um, small piece of knowledge, things are going to be less magical and more logical. Honestly, I prefer this way, maybe you do too. Um, okay, then I'm going to present to you, uh, give a, a brief introduction into Argo City Core. And that's the moment where Alex will join um, the, the presentation, showing you um, the, the use cases that I listed in the, in the, in the problem statement uh, slide, uh, and also providing you a demo. One quick note, uh, think that uh, in one of the future slides, Alex is going to provide you a QR code um, with the links to the GitHub repo uh, that he's going to be using uh, during his demo. So if you want to have uh, access to that repo for future reference, maybe it's a good idea to keep your uh, cell phone prepared to scan that QR code. Cool? All right, so let's get started. And um, yeah, in, our, in the project, we like to, to, to hear constructive uh, criticism. Uh, and actually, this talk was based on a list of those, uh, okay? And it usually goes by, um, Argo City is great, but feature X doesn't fit our use case, to the point that for, for those users, they will consider alternatives, which is not a problem per se, but uh, let's see what are those uh, feature X that uh, some users are complaining, okay? So um, first one is a multi-tenancy. So uh, there are some use cases where, for example, you have cluster admin who wants to um, um, manage the old cluster and they have no intention in sharing that cluster with other teams. They don't need isolation. So multi-tenancy is not something that for this type of use case uh, uh, is gonna make a lot of sense. Uh, the next uh, common complaint uh, that we hear is the uh, proprietary or back model, right? So if you know a little bit about Argo CD, you know that we ship the uh, default installation with uh, uh, um, a proprietary or back model, which means that for you to configure roles and decide what those roles can do in Argo CD, you have to configure a dedicated config map with uh, uh, following a syntax provided by Caspin, which is a library that we use. Um, which, is, uh, which provides great flexibility, but uh, for some, some users, they are willing to trade this flexibility for um, a centralized approach. They prefer to, uh, to centralize all or back configuration in Kubernetes, which is a valid, uh, valid use case as well, okay? Uh, another uh, complaint, uh, proprietary API. So for some, some users, they, they prefer not to learn uh, a new API, the one provided by Argo CD, they would prefer just to rely on GitOps and uh, applying uh, uh, things directly uh, in Git, in a push commit, and then just expect that the GitOps tool will take care uh, of that state and apply in, in, in Kubernetes. Um, okay, moving forward, uh, OIDC based authentication. Sometimes some users, they work in uh, st uh, startups. Um, they, in this case, uh, there are maybe three or four people working in the company. Why bother configuring uh, uh, YDC-based authentication? So maybe not interested in, in, the, in those cases. And um, UI and CLI, uh, most of the people, the great majority, they like the, the UI and CLI that Argo City provides. 
But sometimes it gets in a way that because uh, for some people think it's way too powerful and they prefer not to make that available for the development team. So they would prefer to have that uh, uh, not available at all. Um, this is all valid use cases and uh, we, we heard that. But honestly for us, it was a little bit disappointed because Argo City already addressed those use cases. Um, so Argo City version 2.1 was released in July 2021 and that's the, the, the first version that shipped with Argo City Core. Um, we recognized one major issue uh, internally, which is uh, the documentation that we provide was very, very minimal. So it wasn't really uh, guiding users on how to, how to configure and uh, what to expect from this feature. And, but this is a problem that we fixed. So last Friday, we merged the PR in Argo City repo. So now the official Argo City documentation has a dedicated page with everything that we are gonna be talking here today. Cool? Okay, as I said, uh, before I jump into Argo City Core, I want to provide you a um, quick overview on um, Argo City component architecture. And here I, I pre I'm presenting you um, a component diagram. This component diagram is uh, grouped in four different uh, logical layers, okay? Why I say logical layers? Mainly because uh, they, 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 don't, they don't exist in reality, uh, okay? The, the, the main purpose is to uh, facilitate how you read the diagram, okay? The first logical layer on the top, the UI, then right below the application, then the core, and then the infra, meaning infrastructure layer, okay? So uh, the way to read it is that think that dependencies, they go always top down, never bottom up, right? What I mean by that? I mean that components from the upper layers, they will be able to depend on any of the components from the layers uh, below it, but the reverse isn't true, cool? Uh, so an example of that, uh, which is uh, very easy to understand, um, imagine if Redis, for example, had a dependency on Argo City API server. Right? It doesn't make a lot of sense. So the dependency never goes bottom up, always top down. Okay, uh, real quick going into each one of those components and uh, the responsibility that they have inside Argo CD architecture, right? Uh, starting from the, from the upper layers, uh, the UI layer, we have the web app and the CLI. I don't think I need to speak a lot about this. I think it's uh, uh, self-explanatory, web UI, is the, 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 the web interface that you probably were already interacting with, the, the CLI, Argo City CLI. Uh, so those two components, they depend on Argo City API server, okay, which is the component that we have in the application layer here. Uh, so up the Argo City API server main responsibility is to orchestrate all the functionality exposed by those two components on the top. So everything that is there in, in Argo City UI and in the CLI is powered by uh, Argo City API server. Cool, it, it orchestrates things. Uh, then right below it, we have this uh, core layer where I'm presenting you the, the, the application controller, um, which, is, which main responsibility is to reconcile the, the, the application CRD. Uh, it does a little bit more, but uh, just to make things simple, I would just uh, um, uh, mention the application CRD. So basically, and the application CRD is what get things applied in Kubernetes, okay? Um, then we have the application set uh, controller, which is responsible for uh, reconciling the application set resource, which is what creates application resources, right? It's just a way to automate things uh, uh, more nicely. And in the same layer, we have the repo server. Repo server main responsibility is to interact with Git. So it, it extracts the desired state from Git, generates the manifest in case of customize or Helm. It will generate the manifest and send it back to whoever uh, um, uh, executed that operation in case um, application server or application set also depends on repo server. Uh, at the bottom layer, our, our, I'm presenting uh, the components that Argo CD uh, default installation depends on. So here we have Redis. Those are not components that we develop itself. It's just that uh, are available in the, in the default installation, okay? So at the bottom we have Redis, which is responsible for having some le level of cache 
So Argo City uh, will rely on Redis to avoid uh, hitting uh, uh, badly uh, Cube API server, which is a good idea. Um, again, Cube API, as I said, uh, we have to apply things in Kubernetes, so we have to rely on Cube API. This is one, another component that we depend on. Uh, Git, obviously, because that's where we get our state from. Uh, and Dex, which is the component that is responsible for uh, the authentication. Cool. Um, <clears throat> two aspects I'd like to, to mention about the component architecture, okay? Uh, first one is modularity. So someone, for any given reason, could rewrite repo server if they want it. And as long as this uh, 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 new repo server um, exposes the same uh, interface that the current repo server uh, does today, um, it will be uh, very, very easy to just replace it without requiring any change in any of the components that depend on repo server today. That's the modularity that we have with, the, uh, with this uh, component architecture, okay? The other example, uh, the other aspect that I wanted to highlight from, from this architecture is this. If I'm not really interested in a group of functionality of a, uh, that a given component uh, exposes, I can just shut it down or not deploy it at all. And that's exactly what Argo CD Core is. Argo CD Core is nothing more than a, 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 uh, a special Argo CD installation that will uh, skip deploying some of the components that uh, are exposing some functionality that is not required for those use cases, those use cases that I explained at the beginning, okay? Um, and with this characteristic, uh, we have obviously less functionality available, but for the components that remain, they will still have their, uh, they will still be operational, okay? Um, all right, so, and what is, uh, uh, and how can someone install Argo City Core? Uh, so in Kubernetes, in, uh, sorry, uh, in Argo CD uh, GitHub repo, we have a folder called uh, core install. There you can find a uh, customized project. In this, in this customized project, uh, I'd like to highlight this list of resources that you're seeing here. Um, so this, what this, what, what at the end of the day will get installed in, 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 uh, by, this, uh, by this specific customization, right? CRDs. Uh, Orbex required by, by the controller, uh, configurations, and then the four components that I uh, showed in the previous slide, right? The application controller, application site controller, repo server, and Redis. Cool? Okay, so enough of uh, theory. Alex, this is the point that Alex will join the, the, the presentation and it will show how this thing works in real life. With you, Alex. Thank you for a great overview of a problem and explaining how um, Argo CD Core can help. And so, yes, next part of our presentation is going to be a bit more practical. So we will have a demo. There is a one known issue with every Argo CD demo is uh, it's usually fully GitOps and there is nothing to do. Basically, you just need to apply uh, a set of manifests and then Argo CD take over and perform everything that has to be done. This is why I still have two slides to explain to you what we are going to implement and explain the idea and, uh, and then we can switch into the demo itself. And so, a long story short, there will be two parts. First, I want to show you Argo CD Core in action. And uh, the reason is uh, Argo CD Core is a kind of headless Argo CD installation, uh, but it's not just a YAML file which install less number of components. There are also features. And those features help you replicate experience of the full Argo CD uh, without actually running full Argo CD. I will show you that. And uh, next, uh, we will talk about how to use Argo CD call core practically. And the uh, reason for this uh, topic is uh, Argo CD core meant mostly for Argo CD administrators. And so uh, Argo CD administrators uh, use it to bootstrap clusters and uh, I will try to address config management problem. Um, and uh, by configuration, I mean applications that needs to be configured in Argo CD so it knows what exactly you want to deploy. And so, um, because Argo CD core 
is used by administrators to bootstrap clusters. It is typically installed in managed clusters itself, uh, which makes it a little difficult uh, for administrators because now they, now they need to jump back and forth between multiple clusters and use kubectl to configure Argo CD. What makes problem even worse is a typical cluster administrator team manages way more applications when, uh, than uh, normal, than average uh, application developer team. Instead of managing five applications, let's say, a uh, cluster administrator might manage 100, which pretty much means uh, it's not an option to use kubectl, and we want to offer a solution of this problem. And in particular, we want to leverage GitOps as usual, and uh, on this slide, you can see a um, Git repository that kind of uh, proposes a convention that allows administrators to only make Git changes. So administrator would need to bootstrap Argo CD once and then rely on component called Argo CD application set to reconfigure Argo CD every time when uh, this Git repository has, a, has any change. And uh, to make it a little bit more clear, we broke down kind of uh, the convention that we are trying to implement into two use cases. And the first use case is called cluster add-ons. And uh, cluster add-ons refers to a homogeneous set of applications that needs to be installed into each and every cluster. That's a super common use case. And um, idea is administrators usually provide a set of critical components installed in every cluster and provide them as a service to developers. And components usually include things like Grafana, Prometheus, Argo CD itself, and things like that. And uh, the use case of cluster add-ons we propose to solve using this base directory. And I will try to quickly explain the idea here. So what we want to do is we want to let administrator to bootstrap cluster once, and then in this bootstrap configuration, we will have application set that watches continuously this repository and look for subdirectories uh, under the base directory. Every time it notices a new directory there, it will create Argo CD application with the matching name and use manifests from this folder uh, to, create, to serve that uh, application. And so imagine if you have 100 clusters that you bootstrap all of them once and then you can forget about those clusters and simply make changes in one repository, introduce folders, remove them, and then application set will keep reconfiguring itself and it will be deleting, removing applications. Um, so I assume this, this use case is like very useful for everyone, but we heard from our users that in real life there is a little bit of complication. Uh, typically, yes, you install same set of applications everywhere, but those applications rarely have exact same configuration. Um, and we kind of, we try to name this use case, I called it cluster groups. Uh, and idea that um, often we want to logically group our clusters. And one example is you might want to split your clusters into test clusters and production clusters. And test clusters maybe get new versions, upgrades uh, a little earlier than production. And obviously we do not want administrators to kubectl access a dozen of test clusters, reconfigure them one by one, and then revert uh, the temporal configuration. We want to leverage Git for it as well. And so this Git repository kind of have a room for this use case as well. So here we have a groups directory that represents groups of clusters. So each subdirectory is a, is a group. And so um, idea here that administrators can bootstrap all test clusters with the manifest from group test. And next, let's say administrator wants to upgrade traffic component. To do so, admin would need to create this directory and name important here, it has to be named traffic. And then application set should notice it and it should switch traffic application in all test clusters to this folder and basically if administrator does a good job and put appropriate manifest there, then traffic will be running a new version. So with that enough talking, we, we can see it in action. Uh, let me 
switch from screen, screen mirroring, actually to screen mirroring, so you could see. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, you can see my screen. Uh, yeah, uh, we can see that. Please stop this. And stop this. Okay, uh, I hope you can see my screen well. So, what I was going to say is I hope you followed me. If not, don't worry, because we have this awesome Git repository, and it kind of describes everything that I just said. And basically, it implements the idea that I was uh, proposing to implement. So I hope you had a chance to take a screenshot, and uh, it will be, uh, you know, the presentation itself will be available in the uh, talk profile page. And let's go ahead and open the repo. A few words about the repository is, as, as I said, it's kind of repeat, you know, a repeat of the same uh, presentation that I described. It has a set of steps that explaining what we are going to do. It has a list of uh, things that you need to have before you run this demo. It's not a very long list. So we have here kubectl customized, Argo CD CLI, and some Kubernetes cluster. It doesn't really matter what kind of cluster. I'm using K3S. You can use Kind or Minikube. Uh, and that's it. We can go ahead and, and, and do the demo. So, and I already gave you a heads up, basically, this demo is like super GitOps. There is not many things to do, it's just to show. Um, and I need to run one command. I will run it really quick, and then I, I will explain you what I just did. So I applied a set of manifests, and uh, I bootstrap my K3S cluster with the base set of manifests, meaning it kind of is, it's not part of any group. It uses the, just the base configuration. And this base configuration, it's uh, represented by the manifests in the base directory uh, of my Git repository. And so here we have three folders, one for Argo CD itself, Grafana and traffic. And so expectation here is my cluster should magically get three applications, uh, including Argo CD itself. And they will be also Grafana and, and traffic. And so I, as, as I was describing, oh, and, uh, let me actually show you what the Argo CD installation is. Uh, so Argo CD installation is um, described in this customization.yaml file. And so, as Leo mentioned, we have in official repository, we have a set of manifests specifically for Argo CD core. And this is what I'm using in my um, customization.yaml file. And plus I'm also, I have an application set that implements uh, the, the magic logic that I was trying to describe in, during the presentation. So I will quickly show you application set, and, and uh, it has around, how many, 51 line of YAML. So it's a little bit complex, but trust me, it's not that difficult to understand. We don't have too time to actually learn how exactly it works, but trust me, it's not that difficult, and it's a pretty powerful component in case you want to improve this uh, convention-driven uh, set up, you can definitely do it and uh, leverage application set to, to do the work. So we've got the idea of what we just installed. Let's see if it actually worked uh, or not. So I'm switching back to my cluster. Hope you can see my screen. And so we installed uh, base, sorry, core Argo CD. There is no UI, no API. So the best we can do by default is to just use kubectl to get list of applications. We've got three of them, which is good. So application set did its work. It created a bunch of applications. One is broken for some reason. So traffic is, uh, for some reason, has unknown status. And next we want to maybe figure out why did it broke. So we can try to use kubectl again to get the YAML output. Um, sorry, YAML. Um, so it works. I, I already know what is broken. But it's kind of, it's not the best way to explore uh, what's happening in Argo CD. And now it's time to learn, teach you about uh, one of the features that supports Argo CD core. So Argo CD CLI has a magic option. Uh, basically, you can teach the CLI 
to assume that there is no API server and it just needs to use Kubernetes itself to get the metadata of Argo CD. To do it, you just need to run Argo CD login command that probably already are familiar for you. Instead of giving an API server URL, you can just provide this flag, Argo CD core, and that's it. So CLI knows it needs to talk directly to Kubernetes, and now I can use a little bit more powerful kind of uh, CLI-based UI uh, to get information about applications. So I can, for example, list my applications and get uh, you know, more meaningful output. So traffic was broken. We can check more details about traffic. Um, hopefully this is a bit more easy to understand what's happening with um, the traffic. Uh, but it's still, it's not, not perfect because there is also a user interface. And uh, now it's time to show you how to get access to the UI, assuming that we have no API server. Uh, and it's basically, there is not much to do. You just need to run Argo CD uh, admin dashboard command. Once it is executed, it just starts an API server uh, on your local host and API server configured to use no RBAC except Kubernetes RBAC. So if you as administrator has access to that cluster that run Argo CD, that means you're able to access this user interface and there is nothing to configure. And so <clears throat> here I just opened the UI that runs on localhost. It has three applications, Argo CD itself, Grafana and broken traffic. I kind of, I know why it broke. Uh, I knew it will happen before the demo. The reason is when uh, we kind of bootstrap Argo CD itself and all, all those applications, Argo CD needs time to start and it, the application will, be, it will remain in a broken state for like three minutes uh, or I can click just refresh button to fast track it. So yeah, it, I told application Argo CD to kind of check it one more time. It did it and it immediately synced the traffic. So that's it, now we have uh, Argo CD, it has no UI, but I'm able to use it just like a normal Argo CD using CLI and UI. And now it's time to see if we're able to solve the second use case, which is uh, groups, grouping of uh, clusters. So I kind of, for the sake of time, I decided to just not introduce any new applications and overrides. Instead, I'm going to rebootstrap my cluster and kind of assign it to group the clusters group that I'm calling test. And here I have uh, override for Grafana application. And what that means is I just want to make sure that Grafana now is going to use different set of manifests, which is specific to the test cluster. And to make it a little bit more self-explanatory. So here is my Grafana application. It has a path in my Git repository. Currently, it points to the base, uh, which proves that it's basically using this base set of manifests. So next, I just need to kind of rebootstrap my cluster and assign it to the test. To do so, I need to apply test manifests of Argo CD. And then Argo CD and application set is going to know that cluster belongs to the test group. So if we switch to the user interface, you can notice that Grafana was doing something. It was basically upgraded to a new version and the path changed to the test. So, and that's pretty much it. So we solved the use case. Um, now as an administrator, I pretty much never, I have no reason to access my Kubernetes cluster to reconfigure it and create or delete applications. I can do all my operations in Git and I don't, I no longer need to run user interface, so I don't need to protect it. I don't have to set up any groups and uh, any SSO authentication and so on. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We really value your feedback. This is your chance to give that feedback. So uh, scar this, this QR code to access the UI that lets you provide feedback. And please ask us any questions if you have any. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm supposed to, I guess, choose who. Yeah, go ahead, please. I think you had a question. Sorry, we don't have a mic. I will repeat it after. Oh, 
Hi, uh, to understand the, the purpose of CD core and usual uh, Agar CD, you, you would recommend to use CD core for production to have uh, less, mm -hmm. less way to secure, to protect? Uh, basically, Argo CD core idea that we recommend to use it for cluster bootstrapping. So in case of application, you know, if you want to serve multiple application developers teams, I would still recommend to use centrally managed uh, Argo CD because that will serve application developers better. They will have a single glass of paint that shows them application across multiple clusters. And then as an admin, you might choose to use Argo CD core installed in managed clusters to manage system add-ons, kind of cluster add-ons. Yeah. Thank you. That's because you mentioned that uh, the advantage is not to have the, the burden of SSO, but other way SSO can be useful. It depends on the team and if the target exactly. is a bunch of developers or yeah. only admins. Yes. I think cluster administrators is the best example of a team who already has full access, god level access to all the clusters, and this is whom who we hear a lot from. So those people basically kind of explaining that, hey, we don't need SSO, we have cluster access, but we just want to have a tool to manage clusters. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, thanks for the demo. <clears throat> so I have a question. How do you uh, solve the dependency between two components when you install in a cluster? Because uh, just to give you a context, we have a cluster, but we have like 15, four, 10 to 15 different components like cert manager, let's encrypt, and tons of different of those. Sometimes there are dependencies between the component that you need to manage. But I we solve it differently, but I was just trying to understand if you use Argo CD as an installation, how do you do that? Yeah, that's a known problem, and there was a progress. So the most recent version, 2.6, has a feature in application set. It's called rollout strategy. So you can literally define dependencies between uh, applications, and uh, application set will respect it. It will sync the applications kind of in the order that you specify, and it would wait you know, for kind of first wave to be healthy, and then it move on to the next one. The only caveat, it's like alpha feature. basically. It's been available, and we are waiting for feedback from users. You know, we're going to fix bugs. Once we get enough feedback, we'll kind of mark it as ready for production. Yeah. And the other, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, now we know. And the other thing, like uh, you said that you need a control group. Like, let's say if you want to upgrade the Grafana uh, and not changing the configuration for all the cluster, then you use the different group, and then you point the application set to mm -hmm. choose from that path. Yeah. Invariably, if you like, just a suggestion, or maybe I just wanted to validate my thought. Like, but if you have everything in a base, but then on top of base, if you have another folder called patch, which you have apparently, like you have a Grafana folder in the patch, and you have just a resource YAML in this, which means that you have the only thing that you need to overwrite, which means that you want uh, to upgrade. Mm -hmm. You cannot point the exact part to that patch to from start, from get go. Or so no? I, maybe I misunderstood the question, but let, let me try to answer and correct me if I got it wrong. So basically, the, what I was trying to demonstrate, I think it exactly that. So application set, assume that everything in base is the base, mm -hmm. and then that what's in the test group, those things are only patches. So ah, okay. if you introduce, let's say, patch for traffic, it won't touch anything else. It would only update, update traffic. Yeah, what I didn't implement, but it's implementable, I did not implement deletion of applications. Mm. It would require a bit more complex application set, but it's 100% possible. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, no worries, thanks. Mm. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, hi, and uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, question, uh, multiple clusters, uh, is there a preferred way to manage them? Is it multiple Argo CD installations, central installation, or anything else, control plane? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of, 
I, I think there is no officially kind of preferred way by the community. I can tell you my opinion. So yeah. it just from experience, we worked with the team and uh, it was preferable to have a single cluster that manages multiple clusters. And it worked well for us because anyways, we already kind of solved authentication problem and it just fit well into like the way we were using Cargo CD. At the same time, it was a pain to scale it because that, that was like a monster Argo CD. It, it was consuming like 40 gigabytes of memory and managing like 350 clusters. Uh, and then, so if I started it from beginning and we didn't have context, I would prefer to install Argo CD core into each and every cluster and manage it the way I just described right now. Yeah, so, but, you know, with the context that we had, it, it just fit better into the workflow. So. I didn't really answer the question. I guess both ways works. Uh, and uh, only one hint is if you choose to use centrally managed Argo CD, you will have to deal with scalability issues because it kind of implies this instance will have to manage a lot uh, if you have many clusters. Yeah, yeah. and the <coughs> like, single point of failure argument as yeah, well. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I don't think we have more time for questions, but we have one plushie to give away. Anyone interested? Okay. He... You were the first. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.